morning. Today is Election Tuesday, and I sure hope that you all, regardless of what your political stance is, did participate in our democracy. I'm so excited to vote that I'm going to come back in and vote multiple times with different identities. I know some of you think I'm joking when I say I live in paradise. We are quite literally in Paradise Township. Names can be deceiving though, because this is not what I picture when I think of paradise. Although I would imagine that some of you would love to farm big flat fields like that. You know what they say about curiosity and earthworms. Should have known better, buddy. Speaking of dead earthworms, I'm happy to finally report that we have a cold spell moving through the area, freezing temperatures, which will hopefully cool off our soil profile. With all of our ridiculously expensive anhydrous ammonia applied into the ground, it's not good to have high ambient temperatures because relatively speaking, that means soil temperatures will be above average, ultimately meaning that biological activity within the ground is at a higher level than you'd like, converting all of that good ammonium that you applied to the soil to a leachable nitrate, which is not good. The nitrification inhibitor inserve that we applied does help our cause for preventing any kind of leaching, though it is not guaranteed to be successful. The best ways to conserve your anhydrous ammonia throughout the off season that's already in the ground is cold temperatures and no excessive rainfalls. The combination of those two things result in our soil profile still holding on to a majority of that nitrogen. If it stays warm and if we get a lot of very large rainfalls, typically our nitrogen leaches its way down the profile, which is not good for our bottom line because we want our nitrogen and there are downstream effects with nitrogen leaching and loading. Anhydrous ammonia may be the most cost effective form of nitrogen to apply to your farm, but I personally would like to see us move away from a fall application and move towards a planting time and side dress application of 32% UAN. It isn't quite as cost effective, but I know that you're being a better steward of the land by delaying application. You're also not gambling on how much nitrogen your plants are even gonna end up with after a season of leaching, volatilization, and other factors that could be reducing the amount you applied in the first place. As long as we don't get hit by an asteroid, today should be the last day of tillage. I'm not gonna rule out the possibility of any kind of mishap occurring because we are going to be 35 or 40 miles away from home and everything's been going unusually smoothly this season. There's the Great Lake Shelbyville Dam. You already know we saved the best for last. Tower Hill, far western Shelby County. You wanna talk about the Midwestern paradise? Casey's General Store, look no further. I figured, hey, we've got 200 acres to work over here, so we're probably going to be in this field for a while. Might as well pick up a 30-pack of beer and a carton of cigarettes to make our day go by smoother. Ah, the good old acre eater. This one's a little more fun to run than the inline ripper and the chisel plow. While we were working ground over by Lerna yesterday, Jeff did us the favor of bringing this over, making the two-hour trek in this four-wheel drive tractor with the vertical till, so we could just lollygag our way over this morning and work this field without too much leg work. I'm not seeing the key in our normal key storage location, which concerns me because we don't really deviate from that plan at all. So hopefully, if I call Jeff, he'll point me in the right direction. Hello? Where's the key for this tractor? At Tower Hill. No worries, they had just relocated from their normal spot without telling me. We actually keep a spare key in almost every one of our trucks on the farm that is pretty much universal. It's an interesting choice by John Deere. For those of you who did not know, this key right here could probably start the majority of our new big equipment. Four wheel drive tractors, front wheel assist tractors, and combines all operate on the same standardized key. There's no electronic reading on it. There's no RFID. It's just a standard key that's pretty much universal. From a logistical standpoint, it kind of makes sense because if someone was gonna steal a tractor, they're not gonna get very far. So being able to access the key, really not going to be a big hurdle. While the tractor warms up a little bit, we'll do our walk around inspection to start the morning. There's so many different things going on in this 2660 vertical till that I'm not sure I'd even be able to notice any minor issues because they're just such a large variety of moving parts. Tires all appear to have air and there's nothing dangling that I can see, so that's good enough for me. Let's do this. Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -bum. Obviously this is controlled by the true set system, but you can see my third hydraulic remote will move the gang angle. They're all the way forward. Now they're going back to a less aggressive tillage. 
really straight blades are a true vertical till. We are running a very aggressive gang angle, which equates to more of a disking than a vertical tillage. We're not here to get caught up in semantics. We're here to turn some earth. Okay, let's do this. halfway down with this north 100 acre field. I can't say that our lunch is doing as well as our tillage is because it's already been eaten. My timeliness today for my breakfast slash lunch was rather horrific because I only made it to about 10.30 before I scarfed it down. Even for 260 bushel corn, these stalks are working out perfectly. I did end up backing the disc out of the ground about an inch, so around five inches deep. It was pulling pretty hard, and I wanted to sacrifice a little bit of depth for more tillage speed. I do believe that speed is crucial for a vertical till because it enhances how well it can chop up corn stalks and other residue. I also believe the same thing applies to field cultivators. I've noticed that the quicker we can run our field cultivators in the spring, the better product that's coming out the back end. A lot of anhydrous ammonia tankers on the highway today. The one thing about the anhydrous ammonia tankers that always cracks me up is that not a single one of those trucks is a junker. They're all long-nosed Peterbilts, Kenworths, tinted windows, chrome shined up, as pretty as they could possibly look. It's not like some of these economy van trailer semis you see going by where they're operating with the cheapest semi possible. Those anhydrous tankers, they're running top of the line, some of the highest maintained equipment I've ever seen. I guess we can't talk about fancy trucks without acknowledging the livestock carriers. Those guys also run nice equipment. Case in point, there is a magnificent long-nosed Peterbilt on some anhydrous. Tillage is a lot more fun when you're covering more acres. Running that inline ripper the other day was like watching paint dry. Running this vertical till is like being a part of a NASCAR race. Last pass of this north 120 acre field before I worked the end rows. Oh, I figured I'd been in there long enough a little stretch break wouldn't hurt me before I worked the outside of the field. This John Deere 2660 vertical till is arguably one of the most impressive tillage tools on the market. Just look at the finish we have right here. I'm optimistic that we'll get a good amount of moisture this off season and have a lot of freezing and thawing cycles to break down this residue even further, size the soil particles. That way next spring we can come out here and plant without having to run a field cultivator. By no means am I against tillage. However, we run into a very large bottleneck in the spring because both of our planters can cover more acres than our field cultivators can. That puts us in a tight situation because to increase our efficiency, we need to cover more ground with our field cultivators. By being able to work some of this in the fall and leave a product that is capable of no-till planting in the spring, we can actually reduce our overall tillage needs and hopefully cover more acres every spring. It is baffling how hard this vertical till pulls this 9460R tractor. At a 12 degree gang angle, five to six inches in the ground, this 460 horsepower is giving it all she's got to run eight to nine miles an hour out on these fields. Due to the currently extreme prices of equipment and implements, I know a lot of farmers who've actually traded off their field cultivators in exchange for multiple of these 2660 vertical tills because they actually do a pretty good job in the spring. Disregarding the actual usage of this device, it makes perfect economic sense to cut out two tillage implements and move to one, although the price of the new ones is pretty egregious. Last in row pass of the 120 acre field and we're on to the south 80. Fold up, jog down the road to the south and start our last field of corn stalks for the year. 
The only thing I don't like about the true set is that it won't let me click my remote and hold the folding pattern. Instead, it'll kick off, so I have to hold the remote to fold. It's hard to complain about how that field looks now. That was a very long drive for us. Remind me before we leave this field to go out there and knock off all that dirt on the frame. No reason to carry that home with us. Might as well leave it in the field. Every farm's always got a wet hole somewhere. That's one of this ones. Just for the fun of it, I'm gonna do a quick little demonstration here. I'm gonna do four passes across the field right next to each other, starting with 12 degrees, our most aggressive gang angle. And as I work my way across, we're gonna go to zero, just so I can show you guys exactly how adjustable this tillage device is. Like I said, the tool is set to 12 degrees. You can see that right there on that visual indicator. It also shows it on the side of the front and rear disc gangs. These are both at 12 degrees, not just the front one. They both move in unison. 12 degree gang angle, five inches in the ground. You can also see that here on our true set page. Five inches in the ground, 12 degrees on the gangs. With these settings in the lower area of the field, we're running eight and a half to nine miles an hour. So it is pulling rather hard. Before we start our next pass, we'll bump that down to nine degrees. When I set this down, watch that gauge there on the left center frame as it adjusts to the set points we're going for. Dialed it down to nine that quick. Now we're pulling uphill in the low-lying soil, running nine to nine and a half miles an hour. Just that minor change in gang angle significantly alters the tillage we're doing. Bump it down to six now. Adjust, and we're at the halfway set point for gang angle. With these settings, we're doing 10 and a half to 11 miles an hour in the low lying dark soils. Okay, now we are at three degrees of gang angle. Downhill on the lighter dirt, we're doing 12 plus miles an hour to three degrees. Okay, headed to zero degrees. We have whiplash. Back in the hard pulling part of the field, headed downhill, we're doing 13 miles an hour. As a matter of fact, we're going so fast that I don't even think that the spiked edge rolling baskets on the back are able to keep up with the amount of corn stalks the disc eggs are throwing out the back. You see, they're actually running over the baskets. Whew, that last pass was a little bit fast for my taste. If I'm gonna go at that speed, I would prefer to have my seatbelt on. There's that zero degree gang pitch for you basically straight as an arrow across there. No aggressive stance to our blades. Same thing goes for the back. Nothing really changed across these five passes other than just adjusting the gang pitch. Yes, I did do the math wrong at the beginning. I thought it was gonna be four passes, but three degree increments adds up to five if you actually count the first or the last one, depending on how you look at it. For the record, I'm not showing you this just to brag on this 2660 or demonstrate a cool party trick. Adjustable gangs have been in the market for a long time, albeit none of them have the convenience of the true set system that John Deere operates on. That's not the point. I wanna show you the difference in tillage and talk about why it matters. Here is zero degree gang angle. If you weren't paying that close of attention and you drove by this, you might not even think that this has been worked. The corn stalks are chopped up. However, the soil has not really been turned over all that much. You can see we have undisturbed soil here on top. This pass is three degrees of gang angle. Just comparing the two, you can see a little bit more exposed soil on top, better incorporation of the residue. The corn stalks have been downsized a little bit. However, there are still areas in the soil that were not really tilled that aggressively. On the six degree pass, you can actually start to really notice a significant difference between the changes in settings. A lot more soil is starting to be churned over and also more sizing of the corn residue. Here you have nine degrees of gang angle. Again, every three degrees we're adding is causing a tremendous change in how much dirt is being moved, incorporating all of that into the soil more. I'm not necessarily gonna argue here that the corn stalks have been downsized more. However, it has been more aggressively mixed into the soil profile. 
last and certainly not least is our 12 degree pass which is our traditional settings we like to use on this 2660 vt there is no denying whatsoever that this is not the largest amount of soil disturbance and incorporation of the corn stalks and plant residue. You can get an even better comparison if you look crossways across the different passes and see the amount of soil exposed to the surface versus farther away where it's much more corn stalk heavy on top. I know there's all sorts of different preferences in the comment section of this video. I'm a big fan of incorporating the corn stalks into the ground because they are crucial for the next crop. One would probably consider this to be trash. And in theory, it is trash. It's waste from our high yielding corn crop. However, it contains something very valuable, and that is nutrients, specifically phosphorus and potassium, and I guess nitrogen and all the other micronutrients. This is a very rich food for our soil. I'm not sure about all of you, I personally would like to see my corn stalks and leaves remaining on the field as opposed to blowing away and or washing away. I'm not going to argue with those of you who think that no-till is a completely viable system. I agree. I think you can make anything work efficiently if you try hard enough. That being said, in a high yielding management scenario like we have out on these fields, I believe that incorporating the previous crop's residue is crucial to success the next growing season. Not only do we gain the nutrient availability from all of the plant material out here, we also get more exposure to sunlight, wind, and ambient temperature in the spring that allows our soils to warm up quicker, ultimately resulting in earlier planting, which statistically is the right move. The earlier you can plant your crops, the more they can maximize on their growing season, and hopefully at the end of the day, the highest yields you can achieve happen. Dial this bad boy back down to 12 degrees. Oh yeah, she's definitely pulling harder now. twisted power lines out of this field. So it's only fitting that we finish corn tillage out here as well. Let's just be my lucky day because I somehow managed to pick the tillage line that actually puts every single pole on the same pass. I'll let you know whether or not that's good or bad. It's certainly something. I can understand why people want right hand on low grain carts because I prefer to do everything on my right side. It just feels natural. When I'm planting around the outside of the field, working around the outside of the field, or even going around obstacles like this, I always prefer to have them on my right side. It also helps that the seats swivel that way, making it easier to actually look over and see what's going on. This right here takes the cake though for this farm. Talk about inconvenience. 
It's actually not all that difficult to work around poles like this, especially with an articulated tractor like we're in right now. Because the tractor pivots in the middle, I can use the steering wheel to help quickly guide the implement from side to side and hug objects like this relatively easy. See, we come over, and then we jog it back around, it brings that implement around, and perfectly avoids the pole. That's pretty much the last major obstacle for us this season, those power lines. There's no turning back now because there goes my truck back to Mattoon. Well, I got one way home now and it's in this tractor. Which is somewhat of an operational gamble because something could break on the tractor or the vertical till that requires us to shut down until the morning and I'd either have to bring the tractor home or call someone to come get me. I'm not trying to jinx myself, I'm actually not planning on anything bad happening, but it's always a possibility. Our tillage list for the year is down to just the outside edges of this South 80, which we're about to start. As is tradition, I hopped out to stretch my legs, get some fresh air, and check the air in the tires. Gee whiz, there is a lot of freaking dirt on the frame of this thing. That's the only downside to tilling at high speeds, you throw a lot of dirt vertically. Maybe that's why it's called a vertical till, because it vertically tills the dirt. Disregard that, it was just a poor attempt at a joke. Looks like we're blessed with another beautiful sunset to end our last day of tillage this season. Before we take off from this corner of the property, I want to show you all something. See that right there? A corner post that is knocked over? That was not me. I know that it may look suspicious that I'm parked here. That definitely was not my work. At least not with this tillage tool. I definitely could have done it with the planter, but that was so long ago it doesn't count. A good neighbor always hangs over a little bit on the property line to ensure that anything that grew in between our crops does not get much sunlight next season. It was virtually a no contest here along Route 16 for the nighttime light game, seeing who can delay turning on their lights the longest. Who knows? I may drive all the way home with my lights off just to assert dominance. Uh, maybe I should actually turn those on considering how many power lines are in this field. My stomach was starting to do a little grumbling because I ate my lunch so early, so I raided the snack cabinet in the tractor and I found these. I have no idea what they are. I'm hungry enough that I'm gonna go ahead and pop them open and consume them, but I don't have any idea what awaits for me. It's kind of like drinking the water in Mexico. You never know what's gonna happen. Best if used by the 13th of September, 2022. Oh boy, now we're really in a predicament. Oh probably would be for the best if we refrain from consuming these. That poor combine driver. That's gonna be me here in another 30 minutes when I'm headed back home. Oh, never mind, it's a red combine. I don't feel that bad for him. I've decided against knocking off all that loose dirt. We will take it home as a souvenir in celebration and hit it off with the power washer when we get to cleaning this off. At least this tractor and tillage device combination will be better to take down the road than that big 9620R. If we'd been in the 9620R though, we would have been done about three hours ago. It should be about a two hour drive, so I'm gonna hop out and make sure that my mainframe tires are in fact still on the implement. Those two are there and aired up, and it looks like the far side is as well. Alrighty, let's hit the road. I'm excited to get back closer to home. One, to see my family, and two, we have decent cell phone reception. We made it home, barely. Looks like someone finished the inline ripping for us as well, seeing as that tractor's parked right there. The 9620R is also here, meaning that we are officially done with tillage 2022. That's one of those drives that makes your palms sweaty. It's not even really the roads that make that a miserable trip because those are some of the finest routes we get to take over to that farm. It's the sheer amount of other vehicles on the road, which should be expected for a highway like Route 16. 
All things considered, can we just take a moment to appreciate how smoothly this fall has gone for our operation and what a 180 degree turnaround that is from last fall. I do find that mother nature has a way of keeping things even. You have an easy year and the next thing you know a hard year hits you like a freight train. So maybe next spring may be a nightmare. That's a conversation for a different day though. Wow, look at the moon tonight. There's almost like a rainbow up there. Okay, at this point, I'm sure most of you've had enough of me, so I'm gonna end the video here. I greatly appreciate every single one of you tuning in and continuing to support the channel. It means the world to me. I sure hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you wanna see more, and comment down below if you have any questions. You know I love to talk about farming. Have a great day, everyone. Peace!